Hello everyone, this is Matt Hoots with Sawhorse and I'm at the water furnace booth. Now most people call it geothermal, which gets a lot of confusion because they think you're actually producing energy. More accurate is a ground source heat pump, so it's a more efficient way of heating and cooling your house and also you can use this in pools and whatnot as well. So I've got Austin, which is the Georgia rep for water furnace, is going to talk a little, a little bit about their product, the technology that's involved with that. All right, Austin, I appreciate the, the time here. And so tell us a little about what water furnace is and let's, let's go back a few steps. Like what is geothermal? What is a ground source heat pump? So geothermal is the most efficient way to heat and cool your home. Um, with air source units, you're taking that 95 degree air temperature and trying to convert that to 60 degree air to cool your home. Whereas with geothermal, um, you're taking water, which is actually uh, better for heat transfer, 25 times faster than air, and you're running it through the ground, which stays around 60 to 68 degrees uh, year round here in Georgia. So it makes for a much more efficient system. So I see that you've got the tax credit behind you. So the tax credit has been reinstated. Like what is, what's the status of that? Or has it always been there? So currently I have a 26% federal tax credit. Um, that tax credit was taken away and then added back. And if a new bill is not signed, uh, it'll be going to 22% after this year uh, for 2023. So now's as good a time as ever to invest in geothermal. So as far as the efficiency, I know everyone's trying to go green. They're trying to go all electric so they can add solar or just get wean themselves off of fossil fuels. So as far as efficiency, how does it compare to, say, like an air-to-air -air code built heat pump? Uh, so our average unit, um, we have a program that actually tracks our units that have what we call our symphony. Um, in Georgia, our average heating and cooling cost for one of our units installed is between $48 and $55 per month. Um, and that's based on a 13 cent per kilowatt hour um, energy cost. And how does that compare to a traditional system that's all electric? Um, so there's different SEER ratings for the electric, but um, we've had consumers uh, tell us that it less than half for their overall power bill. Uh, generally, it's about 70% of your power, anywhere from 50 to 70% of your power bill is heating and cooling of your home. So in some cases, reducing that from three or 400 a month all the way down to about 50 a month. Um, and then your total energy bills, a lot of cases under $100. So this is a sizable investment. So compared to a typical system that only lasts maybe 15 years, like what's the average life cycle of one of these systems? Uh, so that's a big advantage for us uh, because most of our units are installed uh, with no outside equipment. We have a lifespan of about 22 to 28 years um, with some units installed that are still kicking it after over 30 years. With copper prices going up, um, is, it, is it easy for thieves to steal your outdoor unit? <laughs> well, we don't have outdoor units, uh, so that's a big advantage for us. Um, unless it's a rare occasion of an outdoor split unit, which we do offer, um, all of our equipment is actually inside the house. All right, so let's debunk a few myths. I know a lot of people say that installing geothermal is not possible in town because you can't get a drilling rig in there. I've done it. We've done it over the years. So is that still a, is that a challenge or a possibility? Or, or where are you seeing geothermal be installed? Is it all over the U.S., all over the state, or is it just in certain locations? Yeah, there's actually very few instances in Georgia where we can't get um, a drill rig for either vertical drilling. Uh, we can do horizontal trench loops. We can even do pond loops if somebody has a pond on their property. Um, vertical drilling is the most common um, for places in town with less uh, space. If you have under an acre, um, of land then typically it is the vertical drill rig. So as far as you, you mentioned putting into a pond but you can also use this to heat your pool like how much energy can you can you get out of the ground to heat your pool and like how many extra months can you get can you be comfortably swimming in your pool as a result of that? Um, in Georgia we typically for most homeowners we see them add an additional anywhere from one to three months um, on each side of the um, warm season in Georgia. So with Georgia, everybody's a little bit different, but if you keep your pool covered, you can swim the majority of the year. So compared to, I guess, what are the other options for heating pools, natural gas, and you can spend 
thousand dollars a month easily just heating your pool with natural, natural gas. gas i think some electric options out there as well the good thing is if you have geothermal for your heating and cooling or your home a lot of times you don't have to have any extra loop, loop capacity and not to go into too much detail but actually heating and cooling the pool can sometimes actually positively affect uh, your loop temperature and get even more efficiency for the home as well Got it. So where's the best place for people to find out more information about Water Furnace? So you can go to waterfurnace.com. Uh, you can also find our dealers local to uh, Georgia as well as other markets uh, on there on our dealer locator, which is under the residential tab. Okay, well, I appreciate your time. Thanks. Yeah, thanks so much for coming out.